What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Rob and in this video we're gonna pick up where we left off in my last video. Now my last video we were working on ways to keep kind of the rotor a little bit cooler on track and in this video we're gonna be doing some uh, I guess you would call it some brake maintenance, right? We're gonna talk about different fluids. We're gonna talk about a dry boiling point versus a wet boiling point. And if you're starting to track a car, why I would highly recommend you add some track fluid. More in this video, stay tuned. All right, so let's talk about Track fluid or your racing brake fluid. Why do we need it? There's a thing um, that we look out for on track and that's temperatures, right? Very important. Your tires and your brakes are the probably the most important thing on a car, right? Without good tires and grip, you're kind of all, all over the place and the car's not safe. Same thing with brakes. We're traveling at speeds and there's a lot of obstacles and cars and turns. We need really good brake performance. Your stock fluid, for the most part, just can't really keep up. And I'm mainly gonna talk about this car, right? Maybe a lap or two, depending on the track, and then as you start to hit them, they fade. You got a spongy pedal, or they just probably go to the floor, right? You gotta cool them down. So, I was normally running I uh, still am right now the mold tool stuff and now I'm going to be switching to the Castrol. Now why is that? So let's talk about fluid and your dry boiling point and a wet boiling point. What are the difference, right? So your mold tool, right? Just go on their website or wherever they talk about this. This is the, the RBF 600, right? Good fluid, no complaints. It's got a dry boiling point at about 594. What does that mean? Well, if I was to open up this bottle, pour it in it, that's where it would boil, right? Water boils around 212. Due to the chemistry and, and, and the chemicals in here and stuff, like we can get to a much higher boiling point. So that's dry, but what about wet? Well, wet is around 400. Now, what does that mean? What is wet? Well, due to moisture in the air, right? This, the chemical or the chemical makeup, what brake fluid's made out of, absorbs moisture. You ever heard about like the humidity in the air? Like there's moisture in the air. And then over time, you know, that's kind of what gets into our braking system. And that, now we have a higher ratio of water in our brake fluid and that's why the wet boiling point is so much lower because it will boil sooner than it is dry with that being said castrol right if i was just to just boil whatever's in here right without moisture is around i don't know just over 600 but the wet boiling point is just over 500 i think it's like 518 somewhere around there so it's over 100 degrees you know the mole tool now the mole tool works great again not complaining at all in this channel we're always testing different fluids you know oil transmissions now brake fluid the car sees a lot of track time i run a i call it a super 200 tire so the re71 super sticky it's a 200 tread wear uh, you know on whose definition like 200 like whatever that means to them and then we're on some Hoosiers really 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 sticky the bad thing is is that I'm on stock calipers rotors with an upgraded pad now if you're just tracking a few times a year no big deal put some mold 2 in it put a you know a, a decent little tire and go enjoy the car you're gonna be fine but with stickier tires and a, an aggressive pad, right? They're gonna generate more heat. And now we got some added downforce, you know, a lot of mechanical grip up front, they're gonna generate more and more and more heat. And I just want a, a brake fluid that can kind of keep up with the paces. 
maybe the castrol will last longer. One way to tell when you need to change your fluid is, you know, color is one thing. The fluid is kind of clear with a yellow tint. When you start to see it get brown and get darker and darker, it's change it. Um, how it feels, you know, you gotta pump the brakes a whole lot. You know, is it, is it squishy? You know, it, those are signs. This car being so light, we don't have to worry about it a whole lot. But your heavier cars with more power, so you know, Camaros, Mustang, Vets, stuff like that, right? Big tire, a lot of contact patch, bigger rotor, caliper, stuff like that, they generate more heat. There's just more mass. You know, they're going faster, the car's heavier. Um, that off rip, I would probably go to maybe the Castrol. Now, it's a lot more money, but you, you get hopefully, you know, a lot more braking performance out of it. So I'm just gonna kind of show you the fluid in my car. Right, it's, um, I wouldn't say that's good or bad. I, I'd say it's more good than bad, but as we change the fluid, that will look, you know, clear. That's, you know, we're starting to brown there. Um, the car has on this fluid, I did it like a track day or two before we did the pads. Now I notice on Sebring, again, turn seven, it's the hardest braking zone. Um, on the track and I felt uh, the word I'm looking for is maybe like kind of icy like I'm, I'm pushing more on the pedal and I'm not really getting a, a feedback that I want um, I don't want to just say it's the patch because these are brand new patch brand new rotors like everything is great um, you know it could be a little bit of the stickier tire you know, the added arrow, stuff like that. So I'm gonna change the fluid just to kind of check that off the list to make sure that it's not that. Um, and then we're gonna go, you know, we're actually going back to the track here in a week. So we're gonna pull the tires off, we're gonna take the Hoosiers off, and we're gonna put on the Super 200s. I call them the Super 200s because they are. And um, I'm gonna show you what I use to you know, flush out the fluid. Now to do this, I just went to Harbor Freight, pick this up, you're gonna need a compressor. Also you're gonna need a slightly bigger compressor. Let me tell you why, so this is what it tells you. So uh, I was always using my mini compressor, which is five gallons, and it just took forever. So now we got a, you know, 21 gallons, so we're gonna, use that and what I mean it took forever it just took a long time for this guy here to suck the fluid out of the bleeder screw and then we have also this guy here which as I'm you know sucking the fluid out with this guy this is going to be filling it up so we're gonna get the car jacked up in the air we're gonna pull the wheels off and we're gonna start the furthest away from the uh, master cylinder there, or your ABS setup. So we're gonna go passenger rear, driver rear, passenger front, and then the driver front. And that's the order we're gonna be pulling the fluid away from. All right, so now that we got the back wheels off, we're gonna go hook up the, I don't know, the fill tube, uh, and then get the bleeder, plug in the compressor, hook up the line, and then start to pull some fluid. All right, so in the kit, you're gonna get this uh, fill bottle, 
and then you're gonna get a bunch of uh, master cylinder reservoir adapters. Basically, you're gonna screw this on top of this, fill your fluid, and then you know pour this down into the master cylinder. That's kind of the, the color we're looking for. Now really quick, there is a, should be a screen in the reservoir. Um, depending on how you put these in, this way or that way. Um, I just don't want these little, I don't know what you'd call them, tabs or claws or whatever to like push out on those screens. So I'm just gonna kind of flip it around and just let it sit on top. We're going to Hook this end of the line to the bleeder right here and um, start sucking away some brake fluid. Uh, you would just take, uh, get a 10 millimeter, place it over the nipple or the bleed screw. start to see the fluid coming out. All right, so while that's still going, I let the fluid get really low and um, I just keep topping, you know, adding fluid because I don't want to introduce air, especially into the ABS. So I'm gonna let this thing get down some more. We'll top it off. I'll look at the fluid coming out of the line to make sure, but we gotta get all this old fluid out of here, through the lines, through the ABS, all the way to that rear tire. So we're basically done with this one here. I did two fills of the reservoir, again, for it not to run dry. And you can already tell, you know, obviously how much clearer the fluid is now. So <coughs> we're going to, you know, tighten that up, pull this off, work on the other side, and then put the tire back on. Now really quick, I'm just going to show you the color difference of um, what's going in versus what we pulled out. So this is the fluid that came out versus what's going in. You can already tell the difference. But let me open this up. And there you go. So as you can tell, this is much darker versus what's going in there. And that's one of the signs that uh, I would recommend to change fluid. done with the rear we're just going to tighten it up put the cap back on it throw the new wheels on it jack up the front and repeat the process
One thing really quick since we're here and you guys can see it. I heard a slight clunk at a CMP and then it slowly got worse and then worse. Um, I, you know, we put the brake duct on the car to test it and I can hear a clunk and I'm like, oh, it's gotta be the end link. And sure enough, it's hard to see, but. Yep, so we're just gonna tighten that guy up there and then down there and just check all the hardware to make sure. But, um, you know, good maintenance. good to go I'm just gonna put the wheels on it you know obviously tighten up the bleeder put the wheels on it uh, pump the brakes get rid of you know when you first start to hit the pedal you're gonna feel it's gonna feel spongy and like there's nothing there a couple pumps you should be good if you still feel it like not giving you any feedback go around and check your bleeders and make sure nothing is coming out and I use about 500 mils Basically gonna do it for this video. Again, double check, make sure the fluid's good. Torque the wheels before you take it for a test drive and you should be good to go. Hopefully, uh, you know, if you're a beginner and you're just getting into tracking, uh, hopefully this video helped you out. Um, you know, let me know what your thoughts are. Um, for those that have upgraded, to the Castrol, you know, if there was any games, does it last longer? How does it feel? You know, comment down below. And until then, we will see you in the next video.